And when I did that, I was on my way home. I was right out by the, the McDonald's on 17 on the bypass. And it hit me that I didn't have a clue how to be a single parent. I didn't. I, there's, beyond that, there is no way that I could ever replace Tessa as a wife and as these boys' mother. And it hit me just how much I love my wife. And I hope she could say, and I can say it, my marriage hasn't been the same since that moment. I, I have a real deep appreciation for my wife and, and the, where she fits into my life and in my children's life and our family. And so we go, and, and these next three days are very hard. And God spoke into me through the music and, and, and through this experience on the, on, on the floor and through his word. And now we're getting into um, the very tough part, and that's going into uh, the delivery. And so we go in, and with, again, the time and everything's ordained for that, and we go in. And they deliver Olivia first, and she's passed several days before, and I get a chance to see her. And first of all, the people that work at MUSC, you know, Paige Rodenberg and some of these, they're angels. Um, place is unbelievable, and unbelievable how they minister to me. Um, they took care of Olivia, and then Samantha was delivered. And I got to hold her um, for the last few minutes of her life. I got to hold her close, feel her struggle, hear her, and then gently let her pass in my arms. And I'm processing this and in, in dealing with this, and they're working with Tessa, and everything seems to be okay, and we think that the, the cloud is lifted. And then it turned bad really fast, and Tessa started bleeding a lot. And I could see, they weren't even trying to hide it. I could see out in the hallway the doctors getting all the, the scrubs on and getting the OR ready and getting everything ready to go. And I'm watching this doctor that's tending to Tessa. Dr. Goodnight was his name. Working as fast as he can to try to get her prepped. And they begin to wheel her out of the room. And I look down at my wife. And we're communicating. And I tell her that I love her. But I've, she's gone. I don't. To me, it's just I, I, she's looking right through me. And so they wheeled her out. And I'm sitting here now in this room. I've got both my daughters who have passed away in, in the room next to me. I've got my wife that they've just taken out. And I'm alone. And I would like to tell you that it was some supernatural thing with lights coming in the room like the other, but it wasn't. It was a still, small voice that just spoke to me, peace. And... All I can tell you is, is that I used to wonder, how do people, when they go through tragedy, even breathe or move? And what I did is I learned that God does it. You don't do it. He just breathes. And you just take one after the next. And so I sat there, and I sat there probably for 45 minutes to an hour, and I thought, this is it. I've I've lost half my family, and you know, we'll have to pick it up and go from here. And then the door opens, and I see light enter the room, and they're wheeling Tessa back in. And it's just pure joy. It's unspeakable joy that she's coming back into the room. They've taken care of it. She's going to be fine. Everything is, it, it, all systems are returning to normal. And I'm just in utter joy. God, you, you have spared her life. You, you, you have redeemed her. You are working in a mighty way here. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you. Thank you for doing that. And everything from there on, the clouds sort of lifted. I had some tough things to deal with, funeral homes and, and those types of things. But for all in all, we were coming out of it. And really... God spoke, and I'm going to share with you two words, and these 
I'm going to share them quick, but they came over days. The first one is in dealing with uh, the girls. Um, it's Malachi 3.17. They will be mine, says the Lord Almighty, in the day when I make up my treasured possession. I will spare them, just as in compassion a man spares his son who serves him. And that, told, that gives me confidence that God is holding them, and they are his treasured possession. And he also showed compassion to me as he spared Tessa and returned her to me. And I wanted to say, and I, I meant to say in the beginning, this is just my story. Tessa has a story of her own, and I think my boys will over time. And theirs is more, hers is more powerful than mine. I just happen to be the one who gets to go first. Um, so this is not, there's, there's, there's other stories that come out of this. So that is in dealing with uh, the girls. In dealing with my family, and this is another miracle. Uh, most families, to be honest, when they go through something like this, the marriage uh, is damaged. Uh, children have to deal with some things. We, God has been awesome. He, he has actually healed a lot of other things through this process and has strengthened our marriage, strengthened our relationship with our children. And what he spoke was, again, coming out of Job. Yet if you devote your heart to him and stretch out your hands to him, you put, if you put away the sin that is in your hand and allow no evil to dwell in your tent, then you will lift up your voice without shame. You will stand firm and without fear. You will surely forget your trouble, recalling it only as waters going by. Life will be brighter than noonday and darkness will become like morning. You will be secure because there is hope. You will look about you and take your rest in safety. You will lie down, and no one will make you afraid, and many will court your favor. And that was actually a verse that was given to Tessa. And I can tell you, uh, that is true in her life. She rests in safety. She, she doesn't fear. And as most of you all know, a lot of people court her favor around here to get her involved in various ministries because she's such a blessing. Until the middle of this week, this is where the talk was going to stop. And as I was preparing, God said, you're not done yet. He said, there's still something we have to deal with. There's a drawer um, that's in my desk, or in my right-hand side lower desk. And that's where my desk at home, where I spend most of my time really is at I had taken all the cards and letters that everybody had sent us. I had taken all the pictures, the ultrasounds, or all that stuff. I had taken the baby boxes and the books and everything that, that the hospital had given us. And I had placed them in this drawer after coming home from the hospital. And folks, I never opened that drawer. And it's been, you know, four years. And God said to me, we're not done yet. You've got to go through the drawer. And so Wednesday morning this week, God, in a loving and gentle way, in my office, helped me go through all of that. And it was so freeing. I read cards and letters from people that I know very well now that I didn't know that well then, just speaking encouragement into our lives. I went through, and I, I don't, you know, it's one of those things, Satan was trying to trick me that I had something to be afraid of. I had nothing to be afraid of. Um, these wonderful things in this drawer and so I went through that and dealt with that. And at the end of it, felt so freeing. 